we're in an interesting time where women are expected to do it all, where it's like you can't have a full-time career and be a mom and be this boss and I can do anything a man can do. I love that we have the opportunity to do that. I think that's so important. But I also think that you shouldn't feel bad if you don't want to do all those things because just being a mom, that's the most important job in the world. On the other hand, if you don't know if you want to be a mom and you really just want to focus on your career, that's okay too. I think there's also shaming in that direction. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's a huge shift that's happening in terms of our mentality. More and more of us want slow living, less flash, and more authenticity. And we can see this change reflected in the fall of celebrity culture, as well as the plummeting luxury sales. On YouTube, there's a return of circa 2010 to 2015 style videos in terms of the content and the editing. And we're seeing YouTubers like Anna Bay and Sophie Shohet, both of whom I love, putting more of a focus on content that has little to do with luxury, despite having built their channel around content about luxury. Now, apart from the fact that we're seeing a rise in slow living and minimalism, we're also seeing a shift in women's mindsets towards feminism and what being a feminist means to us. Gone are the days we wanted to be a girl boss and hello to our soft girl era. A trend that started in 2019 and one that isn't showing any signs of slowing down or dying out anytime soon. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what being a soft girl means, why more women are rejecting the girl boss mentality and how you can stay balanced during this shift. Let's first start by defining the soft girl. So this article from glamour.com describes a soft girl as someone who doesn't value the grind or getting ahead. She prioritizes slow living. Her days are filled with a nearly obsessive focus on self-care from making the perfect morning smoothie to tending to her skin and trading in hardcore HIIT workouts for leisurely cozy cardio. Long term, the soft girl dreams of making dinner for her husband and if she's got them staying at home with the kids. She's not interested in making partner or founding her own company. She's in touch with her feminine energy, her menstrual cycle and her moods. The soft girl trend continues to grow in popularity as more and more young women are discovering that a career is not the only key to happiness, even if it might be for some women, and they respect that. But apart from acknowledging the fact that hustle culture can be toxic and harmful to one's mental and physical health, soft girls are also rejecting the idea that women have to work and contribute to society in the same exact way men do in order to be of value and importance. They're realizing that this was a lie that was sold to us by the radical feminists, and that being soft, feminine, or wanting to stay at home with their children isn't sending us back to our cavemen era. As one person said under a video that I did recently about why more and more women are rejecting radical feminism. The point is, I think, adopting a mentality of live and let live and recognizing the value of femininity has encouraged more and more women to embrace their soft girl era and use their feminine traits to contribute to society. I personally love that soft girls also don't hate men and believe in collaboration, not competition, because they understand that it's not 50-50 in a relationship, it's 100-100. Collaboration is 100-100 and competition is 50-50. And when you encourage collaboration, everyone brings 100% effort and is willing to step in if the other person cannot. But when you believe relationships are 50-50, you start keeping score and living from an energy of scarcity and stinginess instead of generosity. And 50-50 is not a soft girl vibe. I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent, but you know, I think I really started to notice the soft girl vibe when a ton of videos on how to be feminine began to pop up everywhere. I don't think it was called soft girl at that point, but I think that's how the trend started, with feminine energy content. And since then, I've noticed that music has also become softer and more feminine. So if you think about Ariana Grande when she first came out, yes, her vocals were still soft and beautiful, but she used to belt a lot more and the instrumentals were a lot stronger with more techno elements and club vibes. If I compare her earlier album with her latest one, Eternal Sunshine, I can see a huge shift in the style of music, which has become even airier and softer and more delicate. Another good example is Sabrina Carpenter, who I saw someone on Instagram refer to as the original soft girl, and her music now definitely reflects that aesthetic, especially her song Espresso. But if you listen to Almost Love, which came out in 2018, the style is completely different. What do you ladies think? Can you see the shift that I'm talking about, whether that's through the music or the YouTube content or the growing interest in slow living or the rejection of celebrity culture and luxury fashion? Let me know what you think in the comments section. Anyway, now that we've defined the soft girl, let's dive deep into why more and more women are embracing their soft girl era. The main reasons, which we touched on earlier in the video, are firstly, women are rejecting the idea that they have to contribute to society in the same exact way men do in order to be of value and importance. And secondly, women are recognizing the value in femininity and that being feminine or doing what is 
generally considered to be feminine doesn't send us back to our caveman era, nor does that mean we're lesser than or that we don't deserve to be taken seriously. Nothing reflects this shift in mentality better than this BBC article which claims that now more than ever, women are less likely to identify as feminist. A 2018 YouGov poll found that 34% of women in the UK said yes when asked whether they were a feminist, up from 27% in 2013. But still, that's only 34% of the female population. Anyway, it goes on to say that it's a similar picture in Europe with fewer than half of men and women polled in five countries agreeing they were a feminist. This ranged from 8% of respondents in Germany to 40% in Sweden. But that doesn't mean that people who voted no don't believe in gender equality because a study of 27,000 people in the US found that two thirds believed in gender equality in 2016, up from a quarter in 1977, which begs the question, why are so many women rejecting the term feminist despite believing in gender equality? Well, the article suggests that it could be that they do not feel the term speaks to them. And I agree, because with the way feminism has evolved, I'm not surprised that fewer and fewer women feel a kinship with the word. To understand what I mean by that, you can watch my video that I mentioned earlier on, because in that video I also explain why radical feminism isn't real feminism. But back to the BBC article, here's something that really stuck out to me. The term feminist is less likely to appeal to working class women, polls suggest. And I find that really interesting because I can't tell you how many times I've heard some of my friends say, I'm just so tired of working. I think at one point I said this myself. Now, at first, you might mistakenly think that we're all just lazy and that we just want to leech off men. But upon further investigation, you'll realize that the issue is actually that the workplace and its systems weren't designed with women in mind as men were traditionally the ones who brought home the bread. This is why the maternity leave legislation was something that had to be demanded and that only happened in 1975, if we're talking about the UK. But if we're talking about the States, unpaid job protected leave wasn't a thing until 1993 when the Family and Medical Leave Act, FMLA, was passed. And while these laws have certainly eased the burdens of women, especially single mothers, it doesn't change the fact that the working hours just aren't designed for women. I know this is going to sound silly because some people still belittle periods and the pain that comes with getting your period because it's all taboo and hush hush, but when I get mine, I literally feel like I'm about to pass out. For two whole days out of the month, I can't function properly. And the thing is, the world doesn't stop just because you got your period. Nor should it. That's not what I'm suggesting. But this simple example perfectly illustrates how the system just wasn't designed for us. I mean, I guess we could ask for menstrual leave, which is something only six countries around the world offer, but how can we ask for equal pay when we don't do the same amount of work? Well, Taiwan, where I'm from, solves this issue by offering three days of menstrual leave annually, separate from regular sick leave, with compensation at 50% aligning with sick leave policies. So to recap, why is the term feminist less likely to appeal to working class women? Because the word feminist has evolved to mean girl boss and participating in hustle culture as a woman is like trying to fit a round peg in a square hole because the workplace and its system simply wasn't designed with women in mind. You can try, but you'll soon find that your physical and mental health inevitably starts to decline. Now, this isn't to say that women are weak. I mean, in general, we're physically weaker compared to men, no doubt. But what I'm trying to say is just that we're different and we have different needs. Just because we're not exactly like men doesn't mean we're lesser than. Just because our contributions to society look different to those of men doesn't mean our are of less value. So the conclusion to why more and more women are embracing their soft girl era is that they're starting to recognize the value in femininity and the feminine contribution. But is there such a thing as going too far? Yes, of course. Society has shown us time and time again that the masses always struggle to find balance. I was just chatting with a friend of mine this morning and we were talking about how society always seems to swing from one extreme to another and that it rarely or only temporarily finds balance and respite during the transition. So for example, we tend to swing from one political party to another, from maximalism to minimalism, luxury lifestyle to slow living, or influencer culture to a rejection of celebrity culture entirely, or girl boss to trad wife, the extreme version of the soft girl. Thankfully, the trad wife trend seems to have already died off, but what I think is really important to point out is that whilst the soft girl trend definitely has its pros going too far with it or with 
anything in life really is never a good thing. This is why I'm always warning against extreme ideologies, this is why I'm against black and white all or nothing thinking, and this is why, as someone pointed out recently, I'm more of a the truth is somewhere in the middle type of person. So when soft girl goes too far, she becomes trad wife. And the problem with trad wife is that not only does she adhere strictly to traditional gender roles, which is restrictive and limiting to say the least, she's also submissive to her husband, whom she depends on financially. The dangers of this is that it puts the woman in the relationship in a vulnerable position and if he isn't a good man, he can easily take advantage of this, opening the doorway to manipulation, trauma and ABUSE. This was what the liberal feminists were fighting for. Fairer laws that allowed women the freedom to leave toxic relationships with more ease and break the cycle of intergenerational trauma. And whilst I don't believe in judging others for their choices, I have to say that I can see how the trad wife trend could easily turn toxic which is why I feel I have to warn against it. Now, I know some of you might be thinking that there isn't anything wrong with being submissive, but allowing a man to lead is not the same as being submissive. Submissive means to be meekly, obedient, and passive. And being submissive actually doesn't inspire respect, nor would a healthy man want to be with someone like that. A man who truly respects you will seek out your opinion, even if he might take the lead in the relationship because he values you, what you think, and how you feel. P.S. Just because I'm saying that you shouldn't be submissive doesn't mean that I'm implying that you should be argumentative, loud, obnoxious, or opinionated. Think balance, which brings me to the next part. How exactly do we stay balanced amidst this huge shift that's been happening? Number one, stop identifying with labels. I'm tired of hearing these labels like pick me girl, simp, high value man, high value women, girl boss, or even soft girl, because they can all become toxic and not because the labels in and of themselves are the problem. The problem is how people make these labels their entire identity and then proceed to live within the confines of that identity, thus boxing themselves in, thereby limiting their potential and growth. Don't be that person. Number two, understand that everyone is capable of embodying two or more contradictory labels simultaneously and that it's all about adjusting accordingly. So for instance, you can be both a girl boss and a soft girl. This can look like being a girl boss at work, but a soft girl at home with your man. This concept can also be applied to phases of life. For example, when you first graduate uni and venture out into the workplace, you might need to be the girl boss. But when you get married and have kids, you adapt and settle into your soft girl energy. Or you could be a girl boss in terms of wanting to be successful career-wise, but applying a soft girl approach to how you get there. This is also how we can create a workplace system for women by women. Thirdly, always reevaluate your beliefs and don't get carried away with trends. Always ask yourself, is this reasonable or is it an extreme take? Make sure the online communities that you're a part of don't encourage hatred, contempt and a miserable outlook on life and that they aren't formed on the basis of demonizing another group of people by identifying them as the enemy. Last but definitely not least, remember that it's okay to outgrow your beliefs, even if what you believe now is the complete opposite of what you said five or ten years ago. So what? We're allowed to change. It's not hypocritical and people who don't want you to change were never your people people to begin with. So there you go. These are my four tips to staying balanced amidst the changing tides of the world. I really hope you enjoyed that and if you did, make sure to subscribe because I'd love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Ciao ciao!